Welcome back to Snake Eater. So yeah, now we're in the swamp. Woodland Flecktard sounds like some weird insult. All right, so look, yeah, it's something. It's something those really edgy bullies would. Those 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 weird edgy bullies that just make up words and make them sound like insults because they're so clever. I don't know what to tell you, Pedro. I have no idea. Like. Uh, I'm just trying to see. I'm just trying to see how he looks with the Italy flag on. No, 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 just that. I'm, I'm getting the idea you're tracking the stats so because apparently the Italian flag is the one which is blending the best uh, yes. among green and woodland with the current color. Well, little did you know, Taylor, that the Italian flag is great for using in sewers. See? <laughs> why? <laughs> why do I have? Why do I have the way to press X to doubt? Well, you see, Wait, guys. Are they, are I mean, they saying... it does kind of match the suit a little bit. <laughs> yeah, are they are they implying that Italy is basically the equivalent of the sewers? I mean, I know I know one of its cities in the sea, but shit, that's a bit harsh. Nah, 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 dwibs. What they're implying is that Italy are the masters of covert espionage. Exactly. Uh, Wise sure. intelligence <laughs> in their maneuvers. Uh, Alright, let's check with Singent, because um, much like Nastasha, he also has a lot of trivia in our equipment. And you're Singent? None other. I heard that you're an expert on weapons, equipment, and cutting-edge technology. Close. So Boy, it'd be really I weird. The expert on weapons, equipment, uh. and cutting edge technology. Uh. Huh, maybe you should become a I'm DARPA a chief in the future. Yep. Active sonar and motion detect. If you want to know anything about weapons or equipment you find in the field, just send me a message and ask. Later. All right then. So okay. full of life and joy, the younger okay, age. Well, um, hey, okay, I will say. The hey, so far the um the dialogue is actually. Yeah. The English dialogue is better than the one like too. Why the grip? Well, yeah, I get the feeling that, you know, one of the volumes of Backlash with 2 was kind of how the translation went. I'm guessing Kojima kind of relaxed a bit more with this one, letting the localizers work their magic. Got stick out of his ass. Honestly, I don't really notice much difference, to be honest with you. Me neither. A Patriots thing just doesn't work with how they try and do it because of the number of syllables not matching up. Eh, what I, I like, I always just took it as just code for Patriots, like honestly. Whatever. Again, it only really works with the number of syllables, but that's a whole nother thing discussed in Metal Gear Solid yeah. 2, so. Regardless, though. I'm full. For true oblivion. Well, Thor is about taking them down, so... Anyway, now Sigin is talking to us about the Cobra unit. For absolute terror, the fear. And for unsurpassed bliss, the joy. The joy? Ah. The it's best another joy? For the boss, because of the Ow. joy she yeah, that was her cold name. <laughs> During the war, she had a partner named the Sorrow. She has a bit of the bloodlust, you know? So there you go, she was joy, and her partner was Sorrow. Huh. Uh, it's like the two masters of Paul. They complement each other. Yeah, it's like the two masters. Oh, Shira, you don't even know the half of it, as you're going to see later. What about it? <laughs> that model was produced in the 1920s in a weapons lab in the Shangxi province in China. Damn snake, you really love calling Sigmund. Shut up, Jeff. Yeah, time to learn more about guns, dude. It's, it's going to start all over again, just like with Nastasha. It's got Chinese it's good to talk to you. On both sides of the frame, like you saw. Wait, I missed something. Can we start again? About where you hold the gun horizontally? That's a trademark of the Chinese. Just like you were saying, when you're firing in full auto mode, the muzzle jump effect gives you a horizontal strafing motion. They say it's especially deadly in indoor and close range action. What is it, sure? Oh, I'm waiting for it to finish first. And used to dread it. Makes you wonder where she learned to shoot like that. Go on. I'm actually here for cardboard you know box lore, not guns. Well, we already had that in the first game, Shiro. But there's different types of cardboard yeah. boxes, and even more lore. Right, guns are just as important as cardboard boxes in this series. Also motorcycles. And then they took it back with them. And cigarettes. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, Shiro, in this case, the big boss prefers cigars over cigarettes. Wow, very uh, uppity of them. Mm -hmm. So that's how she could pull off all those crazy stunts. Uh -huh. <laughs> of course, it takes a lot of skill to be able to control that much power. That Eva chick is something else. Rich, what's he doing here? 
I mean, not every day. You can literally kung fu a man in the face with a motorcycle like the she did. The yeah. that the boss took with her when she defected are mortars that fire nuclear warheads. <laughs> They're named after Davy Crockett, the hero who died defending yeah, the Alamo of the Texas War of Independence. All right, get ready some, for some nice American history. Right. The warheads are equivalent to between 10 and 20 tons of TNT. Every building you hear that crash? Yards of the Do Hyper that in your toes. completely obliterated. But the warheads the boss had with her were some kind of experimental super bomb. Wouldn't that be funny? So a super TNT that just nukes that. the whole level. I don't even want to think about yeah. what happened if she used it again. Snake, you know what you have to do. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I yeah. Still curious why the enemy specifically after that. Oh, yeah. Here's the easy gun that I'm using. What is this gun anyway? I've never seen anything like it. Of it's course, a cheating you gun. It's a yep, basically. <laughs> gun I designed especially for Fox. Oh, he designed it. How oh, nice. But it doesn't have a. It doesn't need a suppressor. What do you mean? The noise suppressing mechanism is built into the tranquilizer rounds themselves. Uh, the inside of the powder case contains a tiny piston. It's set up so that when the firing gas pushes the piston, the piston pushes the bullet out of the chamber. Incredible. The firing gas is sealed within the chamber by the piston, preventing it from escaping outside. That's why there's no sound when it fires. Fascinating. Ergo, wow. this comes immensely. Ergo, this comes immensely in handy when you're going you for the big boss rank. Me. Yeah, just basically. Having the easy gun equipped makes it tougher for your camo index to drop. Wow. And it'll help you recover your stamina. Nice. On top of all What's that, next? Unlimited like ammo? A what? Yeah, a no, that, that, that's the bandana. Infinite ammo. Yeah, I know. They look alike, don't they? <laughs> but can you imagine if the easy <laughs> gun also the gave, like, you know, unlimited ammo to the, the point where you don't even need the bandana? In, in this particular... Uh, after, uh, starting with Metal Gear Solid 3, you will always recover health automatically as long as you're, um, as long as you're not under fire. So technically now, uh, it becomes a bit less. Um, Let's talk about the ammo. Also, All right, ammo. That mm -hmm. being said, real G's always use the bandana for this game. Sure. All right, so cardboard box. Actually, I'm curious. Have you ever done a playthrough without the bandana, despite how much that spits in the face of a story? Well, yeah, I've done plenty of playthroughs without uh, the bandana. Oh, there you go. There you go, Shirai. What are you doing? I'm in a box. A cardboard box? Why are you... I don't know. I was just... Don't worry, it'll come in handy in Smash. Irresistible urge to get inside. Oh my god, he's a cat. Just an urge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It was my destiny to be here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's just straight no. up my cat. Yeah. <laughs> when I put it on, I suddenly got this feeling of inner peace. Inner peace. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I've been like, in a cardboard I boat race. I get like it. I found the key I get to it. True <laughs> the key to happiness. Any of that makes sense. Not even a little. I know somebody who <laughs> fell asleep in a cardboard box then once, and no, it's not me. Man, I don't want to know what you mean. <laughs> you and paramedic is everyone but me that is a Valentine. So does that mean Shiroi that you no, um I'm talking about a human. <laughs> so does that so does that mean okay, well. I suppose even that dumbass box might make a decent disguise if you wear it inside a building. Yeah, just put it on <laughs> or something. I don't give a shit. So yeah, I'm like, that's the that, that's the difference between Nastasha and Sigan. Sigan is not a particularly big fan of cardboard boxes as a, as a means for stuff. Um wow. Um, I mean, I'll be honest, I always thought Natasha was just being nice, really, about well, the box. I remember the conversation, she literally just immediately starts by describing the entirety of the box, and then she actually asks what is it for, and Ziggy's like, I don't know. <laughs> well, that's why I say I think she was being nice, like, oh, obviously she knew a lot about it, but unlike Sicken, she didn't just call Snake an outright dumbass for using it, like Sicken does. <laughs> so what you're saying, Shira, is that, uh... Um, uh, you you can truly understand both both of our of our protagonist snakes regarding the their love of the of the cardboard box. I guess. Yes. Again, just remember, Big Boss was quite the nerd to the point where he literally believed it was his destiny to use a cardboard box for hiding. And it's totally not uh, just Kojima going wink, wink, nudge, nudge to the audience or anything. No, 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 no. You see, this is actually part of the very clever and scripted lore. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on that line that he just said. 
Uh, if I'm going to be stunned, I'd rather be by a woman. You know, I get the feeling Big Boss and uh, Spike Spiegel have uh, similar tastes. All right, what else do we have? Um, the mic. Uh, the directional okay. microphone. The, the directional microphone. Let's see if Singer has anything to say about it. I see you've picked up a directional microphone. Hey, the remember this from Metal Gear Solid 2? When you equip it, you go into first person view and the mic will pick up sounds in whatever direction you point it in. I do like Sigan's advice the about the cardboard box. Like it's better to use it inside a building than out in the middle of a jungle where someone might wonder. Wait, what? We don't get mail here. It's useful when you want to know whether there's an enemy on the other side of the woods or something. Try it out. Yep, what Although, he said. I suppose some justification could be that somebody thinks that the cardboard box was blown away during the explosion. Not just that, Although, Nova, that it's also very regular potentially for a cargo plane to actually lose uh, stuff uh, in the middle of nowhere. Although so, cargo planes usually use like wood for their boxes, yeah. not mm -hmm. cardboard. Based on your uh, comment from uh, our commentary of e uh, Microsoft's E3 2013, Shiroi, I'm guessing your personal favorite is the ones from Phantom Pain, okay? or as you put them, the cardboard box with anime girls in it. Eh, I'd rather, um... I can mm. instantaneously switch I had a cephalopod or cat stickers on it, to be honest. Oh, right. I don't think there's cat stickers you can put on the box for the... I'll have to look it up again. Uh, aren't, aren't some of those anime girls also cat girls? Uh? Uh, well, yeah, there is. Uh, yeah, that is true. There is one of the anime girls that you can put here. She has. She, she, yeah. she, she, she has uh, both a magical girl wand and a cat ear, so that counts, kind of. Iron welded and scraped down multiple times for maximum precision. The front strap part of the frame has been checkered to make it dig. Snake, you're nerd. You're nerding about guns again. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he's not. Supposed to, was supposed to be explaining. Let him enjoy things. things. I mean, he's not wrong. This gun is very. You just know that uh, if whatever if, if whatever happens to turn this guy into big boss did not happen, he will be the president of the NRA. They also reworked oh. the safety to accommodate Damn. the ring hammer. So you're telling me he would be the final boss to Tim Roth, then? Because Tim Roth's very anti-gun thing. Yeah. Which made filming the Planet of the Apes remake with Charlton Heston a bit of a chore for him. And the trigger itself is a long type for easy finger access. The trigger pull is about 3.5 This will come in handy for all of you who want to use guns in the future. The magazine well has been widened to make it easier to put in a new magazine. The magazine catch button has been cut for down recreational to to purposes, uh, such as going sure. to the spring housing gun ranges the to increase grip. Mm -hmm. And it's even been fitted with stepping so it doesn't slip from the recoil when firing. On top of that, they added cocking serrations to the front part of the slide. That lets you load and eject cartridges faster in an emergency. Thank you for coming to my TED Talks on handguns. No question. This thing could shoot a one hole at 25 yards in a machine rest. Ah, it's still not a GUA a Avenger. Yeah. I've never used a weapon this fine in my life. Okay. Right. Right. Dream come they, true for you. If, if you're done jacking off with your gun, we can actually okay. move on. <laughs> I was gonna... I was gonna... Say, uh... One of these guys on the things talk talks to a lot. It's going to be a treat. We kind of already did that. All right. So the basic gist of it is we have to get through this entire swamp. Snake can no, swim. Vader, if you're shooting the water, the lag will jump at you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there's a lot of crocodiles in the swamp. However, since we have our easy gun, we can use it to stun them, to put them to sleep. So we should be fine. Aww, they're so cute when they're not trying to eat you. Yep. Okay, I have, to, I have to admit, I'm, I might, it's been a long while since I actually saw the a documentary thing specific around this area, but uh, I don't remember much about crocodiles living in Eastern Europe uh, or areas like Wait. these. Uh, well, this is not Eastern Europe, though. Okay, true, is instead of more Middle East, uh, more than anything, Russia, uh, combined with Russia, maybe, I don't know. The Soviet Union was expanded a lot during that, during back then. Yeah, I know this is Soviet Union territory, but that could be like a ton of places at this time during the Cold War. 
If I remember correctly, this takes place in the same place that the climax of Goldeneye does. Let me double check real quick. Good idea. Uh, Golden. Nice climax is in like South America somewhere, I think. Yeah, that, 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 that's what I'm saying. Though, I, if I remember correctly, I think it's here. That's where no, this, this is the same river, Pedro. We even revisited the place the where we were supposed to get, uh, you know, um, the scientists. Uh, sure, sure. That is still to be in the Soviet Union. Okay, 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 okay. Let's see. Press the CQC there button or the is... roll button to move forward. Each button this will move you one is apparently press the button repeatedly to swim what will later go on to be present-day Tajikistan, which is adjacent to Pakistan. The Middle East. Uh, the Middle East, then. Right okay, never mind. Then. Let me see if that place has it takes place. It, it takes place um, uh, around the time that in real life history, the Cold War. Uh, well, yeah, like, like we said, the back when the territory was part of the USRR. Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, just uh, keep swimming and uh, you'll get there. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Yes, apparently crocodiles are in Tajikistan. I'll be damned. Also, I saw a turtle. I don't oh, think that's a. That I is a. I don't think that's a turtle that. too. There was on the right uh, before you know mm. it went off camera. I guess. Uh, I'm surprised that other crocodile didn't come and get you. Um, the crocodile Maybe it was just fed. The crocodiles are a bit. The, the crocodile AI in this one is a bit. They're, they're a bit slow in the head. It seems sometimes. Like sometimes they'll just oh. kind of. Oh. Okay. Eva. Snake, are you there? Eva. Did you miss me? Did you make it without <laughs> trouble? That's not you answering the questions, Snake. So you're back with Volga. In a matter of speaking. What about the boss? Yeah, she's here too. Better be careful. Thanks. I will. The boss and I get along pretty well, though. And by here, I mean she's right next to me. Why would anyone want to defect? Betraying your country like that, I, I just don't get it. Are you talking about the boss? Why do you do it? You no, no, talking about Krusty the Clown. Okay, I'm talking about the boss. Small rural town. I never even knew there were other countries, other cultures, other ways of thinking, until I went to work for the NSA. And one day. I found I'd lost faith in the things I'd been taking for granted. What did you see? What was it that made you want to change sides? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Try me. Yeah. I saw the universe. The universe? Not the actual universe. The universe as the intelligence community sees it. I realized that the gravity in this universe was holding me back. That's all. People and countries are both changed by their environment and by the times. That sounds like what the boss was saying. Mm -hmm. There's a world of difference between this country and America, but it's only a difference of position, a difference of perspective. Coming here made me realize something. Half of what I'd been told was a complete and utter lie. The other half was a conveniently constructed lie. Where's the truth then? It's hidden in the lies. Are you lying too? Who knows? I've been trained to make even the most severe falsehood sound like the honest truth. Weren't you? No. I believe because I have to, even if it is a lie. Just That's a reminder, he does legit believe I'll in Santa remember. Claus. <laughs> if you need me, give me a call on the radio. My frequency is one four two. Listen, this man doesn't get enough joy. Also, if he wants to believe in Santa, let him believe. It's funny. This philosophy about states uh, around the same time, roughly, the game Ace Combat Zero was releasing. It has also a similar thematics uh, when it comes to politics. Uh, interesting. Hmm. Although it's, it's worth noting that uh, show of the signs at the time. Although it's it's worth noting that that franchise takes that place in a fictional really universe more than anything. So yeah, Eva will be our one for the trivia of the places we visit. Forgot the game. It got its name from the deep swamp that covers the area. The crocodiles in that swamp are extremely vicious. Oh yeah, we noticed just a few minutes ago. A bunch of soldiers out on patrol. Now no one even dares to go near the swamp. Oh, well, there you go, Tim. Maybe that's why that crocodile didn't particularly was in a hurry to eat. Maybe he already had eaten something. I mean, watch out for the shrimp. So yeah, while we. Tells us to be careful after we've already waited. 
Infested through crocodile infested waters. So yeah, the basic gist of it is that Eva went on ahead and she's already infiltrated the enemy base. Um, so let's get to her. Yeah, the there, you flyer, there you go. You know, Ooh, I never... Kevin McAllister, come on. <laughs> you know, I always wondered what's stopping you guys from just, you know, walking over the rope instead of having to waste ammo on it. Because... Or use your um, knife. Because, because the boss wanted to um, unleash it in a, in a Kevin McAllister. I suppose using the knife would require him to get too close and that could I, trip the trap. But again, like I said, just hop or step fact, over the rope, guys. In fact, the way is actually pretty innovative. This takes place decades before Home Alone. Yes, Home Alone yes. is in the Metal Gear universe, and I will not hear anything to the contrary because uh, it's not true. Sure. There. Don't you see, Dreams? Home Alone was inspired by the machinations of Metal Gear Solid 3, which is funny because it goes full circle because then Home Alone 3 is about going up against KGB spies. Mm hmm. Well, that's the thing. 1997, the KGB weren't even around anymore. All right, let's see. I'm guessing it was supposed to be sort of nostalgic in its setting. Uh, maybe it wasn't KGB. Maybe it wasn't KGB, but I know it was like you know terrorists or whatnot. Yeah, they were trying to get a chip that ended up in Chicago, and a bunch of highly trained spies get defeated by an eight-year-old. So yeah, for now on, we'll use the Desert Tiger outfit, and we're gonna stick with the Italian flag because it still works just fine. Cool genius. Yeah. So basically, yeah, it, if I ever need to stay camouflaged to save my life, <laughs> use the Italian flag. Well, if, you, if you're specifically in this specific jungle, I guess. Oh, you see, other jungles use the American flag. For certain beaches, you use the Welsh flag. <laughs> That's actually and not been a single... In London, you Sorry. use the UK Union Jack. That should be the English flag. Mm -hmm. There you go. Basically, yeah, this I particular know if the place. Flag was an option. Yeah, you, you noticed that the fact that the terrain was a bit. Uh, well, there. So uh, that way, I could go better. through. All right, all right. So here's the basic thing. This particular area has proximity bombs or mines. Oh Ready. boy. You know what that means? It's mine hunting time. Fortunately, the mechanic from. Uh, Metal Gear Solid uh, from Metal Gear 2 onwards is still in place, meaning you can crawl in these uh, in these bombs, so you can catch them for yourself. Yep. All right. Um, Eva. Good. You made it to Bolshaya Pust. The name Bolshaya Pust means something close to the Great Cavity. It probably got that name from the crevice to the north. There's a fortified area in the southern part of Bolshaya Pust that's strung with barbed wire. To the north of that is a relay station that serves as both a depot for material shipments and a communication facility. The crevice leading to the cave is located to the north of the relay station. Head north. All right. Head hey. north. Head north. Got it. All right, then. You know, let's see if Major Zero has anything to say. Eva said it was to the north, so head that way. Okay. Thanks, Zero. Second? No. Not yet. Though. Ah. Let me uh, see. Second can't respond right now. Please leave a message after the beep. That's not a uh, beep, though. That was quite the Ooh. beep. <laughs> <laughs> Please, maybe warn us that it's going to self destruct instead of saying after the beep. Beautiful timing. <laughs> and yeah, um, if you do blow up, you have to be doubly careful, not just for yourself, but also because if the guards hear one of these bombs exploding, they'll immediately start circling the air to find where the, uh, if there's somebody uh, in here. Nothing to see here, just a bunch of leaf ferns. Yes, that's right. Nobody here but us ferns. Mm -hmm. And the Italian flag. Yeah, in fact, um, hey, it wasn't... Uh, I, I, no, was Italy and Al... I know they weren't part of the Soviet Union, 
but were they um, allied to them or to the Western powers? Oh, oh do, we, so the, do we really don't have near enough time for telling you how deep that rabbit hole goes? About <laughs> the, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be instead give you a very succinct answer for the time being and tell you that no, Italy actually was part of the states that allied with the United the USA. But that's very reductive as an answer. The Cold War as a whole is probably one of the most complicated worldly conflicts you can read about. Mm-hmm. All right. So and it go. ended because Gorbachev got fed up and left to dissolve the whole thing on his way out. I guess so. Uh, again, it's, it's like, more complicated than anything. Again, watch... Yeah, it's uh, more complicated than that. Let's just sum it up. Well, uh, again, just watch Oversimplify's video about it. Uh, you know, it's actually very informative on the matter. Ironically enough. <laughs> like, I think even he admits at this point that the term oversimplified is meant to be ironic at this point. Mm -hmm. I think he started off with broad summarizations, but... Later, when he developed his craft, well, like, they're anything it, but oversimplified. <laughs> they're fun cartoony documentaries. Ways to make learning fun. Imagine that, schools. Indeed. Like, uh, I won't lie. If, if we had something like oversimplified back then, learning probably would have been more fun. Where are the enemy soldiers? Well, again, we... Yes. Again, again, I I get also the idea that the the either wait until you know maybe there's another there's something that actually basically the, uh, the actual soldiers are actually inside the building uh, like so uh, inside that perimeter at the end like they don't actually patrol outside of the fence which is where we are um, so they're looking but they're looking within their patrol area. So will we be seeing you using any claymore mines this playthrough? Uh, well, when it comes to using the mines, I don't find the mines particularly useful in this specific game. Uh, even a situation like that boss fight of the guy running, with running man, running man, yeah, yeah, running man. Um, That's in the, fair. In this particular game, like especially with the jungle setting, it's much, uh, especially in the, in like with the new mechanics, it's far easier to stealth than uh, what. Well, there you go. There we are. There you go, this. See, you can see one there in the back. They're, they're, they're on the other side of the fence, so... But again, because the alarm was raised, actually they move into different, different positions. You are just about, we're basically out of their range. In the meantime, I might as well give some technical background on this game. Um, compared to Metal Gear Solid 2, uh, ran, despite looking as gorgeous as it did for a PS2 launch game, it still ran at 60 FPS, and a very solid 60 FPS, which made it which to this day still makes it a technical masterpiece for its time. Um, you can check, for example, Digital Foundry's um, entire documentary on the technical aspects of Metal Gear Solid 2 as a, they describe it as a PS2 technical masterpiece, basically, because it it's so well put together. This game, on the other hand, I... because of... Go on. Oh, oh, wait, never mind. I was going to ask if it was one of the Swang Song games for the PS2, but no, the PS2 had... the early parts, yeah. Sons of Liberty was a launch game. As for this one... Uh, no, 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 no. I was talking about Metal Gear Solid 3. Uh, 2004, so no, we still had a couple years uh, uh, of yeah. PS2 left. So that's, we, had like, we, had like, we had like nine years. <laughs> that's well, kind yeah. of why I stopped myself from asking, because I realized, no, 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 we still had quite a bit of time, like... And don't underestimate the PS2. That thing ran alongside the PS2. Sure. Hurt. The basic gist of it is that now that now that Kojima could finally implement the jungle setting he was originally intending for Metal Gear Solid One that he couldn't implement because the PS1 was not quite powerful enough for that. However, the PS2 itself was apparently also not quite powerful enough for Kojima's vision because in order to make this game run on the PS2 without blowing the system up, they had to. Uh, half the frame rate back to 30 FPS, which makes this the first Metal Gear game to run at a 30 FPS. However, since I'm playing the, the HD remaster by Blue Point, uh, this remaster is in 60 FPS. So now we, so mm. thanks to Blue Point, we finally get to enjoy uh, Metal Gear in the Jungle in 60 FPS, just like Metal Gear Solid 2 had 60 FPS. So there you go. Also, to give you an idea, when usually when when it comes to Swan Song, for example, for the Brilliant <laughs> for a PS2. Um, 
it was more <laughs> in those early years of a PS3, but not completely until the shutting down of a PS2, you know. Something like, say, 2007, 8, and 9. Mm-hmm. Uh, the games that came out around the time were mostly JRPGs, uh, like Final Fantasy XII and Rogue Galaxy. Not counting HD remasters. And from, 2000, and from 2010 to, um, to its discontinuing in, I think, 2013, uh, PS2 games then were limited to, like... Um, yep. Um, uh, not counting the remasters in the HD coll- in, bl- in the HD collection. Um, this was the beginning of the time where Metal Gear uh, started to have to run at 30 FPS because Kojima kept getting more and more technically ambitious with each game. Uh, we did, however, get to the point where with with Metal Gear Solid Five. Uh, the game ran at 30 FPS on PS3 and 360, but the PS4 and Xbox One versions ran at uh, 60 FPS thanks to the Fox engine. Um, so we were not again not counting remasters. We would have to. We're now entering the 30 FPS era of of the Metal Gear series, basically. Uh, like even uh, I'll have to look back. Like I don't remember if the if the original PSP version of Peace Walker ran at. 30 or 20, one of the two. If it's a, if it's a, mm. considering that type of complexity of a game for the, the system, I am to guessing the same thing that happened to stuff like the Monster Hunter game, as in first, a generous Uh-oh. 30 that was more of 20 most of the time. And don't worry, Shiro, I, I put it to sleep. I didn't kill it. As you have that option in this game. I mean, you were attacked first. So, I think know. it's supposed to be a Doberman species? Yes, Uh-oh. I think so at least. Also, I'm pretty sure this game isn't going to make you try to feel bad about a dog it forced you to kill. No, no, no. no. Wink, wink. Yeah, I'm not talking uh, about anything in particular. Why do you ask? Clearly Resident Evil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those things came straight from hell. They gotta go. <laughs> well, you see, Shiroi, they weren't bad at first. And I you also- know, me. I also feel robbed because again, the 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 games do mention about the anti the, the uh, virus, uh, you know, coming from the Umbrella Lab and propagating via you know the animals getting mm-hmm. eaten progressively. Typical, you know, um, typical outbreak stuff. But I still don't have my mutant zombie rats. Where the fuck are they? I mean, you know, I'm amazed in a series that literally has a giant zombie whale. That yeah, we don't have zombie rats. Nothing to see here. I love how the guys are so concerned about the dog that the minute you put it under, that puts them on high alert. I mean, they're trained to be part of a team, so... Yeah, it's a, it, 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 they, they react the same way they would if they saw another soldier foul. foul. Like, uh, they know that there's something wrong, there's perhaps some kind of intruder, so they of course start patrolling. Hey, sure, what if I told you in the future we get our own clever eye patch wearing dog? Well, no, she already knows. I've already shown her footage of DD of D of Diamond Dog uh, from Metal Gear Solid Five. I'm more reminded instead of a promotional material for Call of Duty Ghost, where they hyped so much the fucking dog companion, saying that we modeled it after real German shepherds, and the model of a dog looks like shit. Oh my god, that was just perfect comedic timing. But sure, in terms of Resident Evil, Perked. don't worry. Resident Evil Four makes up. Oh. All right. Uh, I guess. Oh, ooh. watch out for the mud. Mud. Okay. All right. We should be fine now. Yeah, as demonstrated on the previous part, if you take your too much your sweet test time, you will actually sink. So be careful. You don't want to sink in there. Mm-hmm. All right, there's another trip rope there, so let's take care of it. Weird place to put it. Yeah. And you'll also notice, yeah, again, um, no sound alarm. Uh, the tri- even 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 taking care of the trip rope might alert a guard who might see the trip rope suddenly. So again, the the excellent AI from Metal Gear Solid Two is still here, present and accounted for. Arguably, uh, judging from the sound that this one made, it was one of those uh, uh, trip sounds that are like a rope connected to a set of like canteen cans, or yep. something that uh, when actually tripped actually causes. Uh, uh, you know, sound mm-hmm. of your pre- of the Yeah, pre- that's the thing about the trip roads. They don't all do the same thing. 
Indeed. You, you need to take a risk. But yeah, um, she's better. Okay. No, no, like um, I've already, I've actually already shown Shiroi uh, privately vi footage of Metal Gear Solid Five where Big Boss becomes, a, as she puts it, a dog dad. <laughs> uh. Also, hi Frogger. Yeah. Well, I technically know, it's not right? Frogger, it but like yeah. does sound a bit oh, it, like it. If I okay. I think it's based roughly around the design that Frogger was having at the time. That is potential too, yeah. Basically, sure, think of this as your collectible in the game, like, um... That little frog that does noises that if you shoot it. Was that a sound effect frog was using? I, I think so, but again, I don't have too much of an experience, if I have to be honest. Anyway, sure, in regards to Resident Evil, while it is a shame about the dogs in the first two games, don't worry, Resident Evil 4 has something nice for any of you dog or wolf lovers. <laughs> if I remember correctly, that was made intentionally to be a reference to, the, to another game that Catherine was making all the time, Haunting Ground. Uh. Speaking of which, no hecking clue why Tears of the Kingdom keeps getting 10s out of 10s. They can't, you can't put the dog in that game. I know, right? I actually it's noticed... bullshit. <laughs> Only because the game's so interactive that apparently Aurula they doesn't have time that dog to hear, don't you know? They were too busy making you uh, have the ability to. Uh, yeah. Well, Shiroi. Well, she. Well, she. Well, she. Well, she. Well, she. Well, she. Well, the more reason why I'm looking forward to Final Fantasy 16 being my game of the year because in that game you can pet the dog. So. <laughs> wait, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. War crimes. Have you actually seen the video of the person who manages to make a freaking biplane in? I've been game? watching so much. Although, That's great. Although, <laughs> although I would like to. People that make sorry, go on, play, right? Although I would like to clarify that I'm actually really enjoying Tears of the Kingdom for the record. I'm not. I'm not trying to say that. Uh... Jova, people have made fucking bombardiers. Uh, like so... when Shiri mentioned about committing war crimes, she wasn't kidding. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, Pedro. What's the most complex thing you've made so far in Tears of the Kingdom? <laughs> uh, I don't know, Jova. Like uh, I would have to. You have to understand, Jova, that it requires a, a bit of extra, you know. Uh, focus uh, because they they need to still apply with the physics engine of the game. More often than not, you will see also videos of people trying to make stuff like a bolt only for it to you know bolting constantly. I'm still waiting for someone to make a penis using the ultra hand mechanic. Um, people have someone already made a do... penis out of the weapons. Uh, some well, there people, you go. people made uh, actually a golem with with a penis that shoots fire. Well, there you go then. Beautiful. <laughs> 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 Finally, the testosterone it's apple like, game again, I've been waiting just for. Just as Aruma intended. It's, it, 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 you see, developers, the lesson here is if you give player create, uh, the, the freedom to create, they will create penises. Look at uh, hey, Sonic bro, Frontiers, Nintendo where you see people drawing penises with the side loop. So <laughs> Nintendo just doesn't learn because this shit happens also with Smash editors. Yeah, editor. exactly. <laughs> if you oh, the Smash turn, though, Oh, the Smash there's editor a, there's was There's a reason a thing. for the longest time did not add the color red and white. I will Until say the this. Mayo vs. Ketchup Splatfest. I will say this. Kudos to whoever got away with the Climax Zone stage editor. That... Oh, that um, is just a thing of beauty, Eva. but my god, what a way All to get right. sex education. The first time I saw somebody new to Splatoon, they took the paintbrush and drew a peepee -pee with it. I'm surprised nobody's like made a law named after. You see, Shira, the... it's like I keep telling you. It's like I keep telling you. Um, there is a basis for Beavis and Butter. Beavis and Butter is indeed a uh, a caricature of let's face it, what a lot of people actually are like. So let's face it. <laughs> no. You know, you know, some claymores. you know, we got stuff like Sturgeon's yeah, Law or Bull's Law. Why isn't there a law pretty much stating the phenomena of people the just US loving to draw cool. genitalia the, the minute they get the chance? Because it's because they consider it funny. Like I said, Joe, <laughs> it's a boner. <laughs> That's literally again, again, again. Mike Judge didn't just come up with this concept for those characters out of the blue. He genuinely saw people, kids who genuinely behave like that, and still do. Yeah. <laughs> When the mind that's, why Beavis and, that's why Beavis and Butthead has, has stood the test of time, because, let's face it, that kind of mentality is a constant thing. 
like they're still oh, uh, they're still around so oh, i get it what i'm saying is that i'm surprised that nobody's conducted a theorem around it so if you come across like we've already got stuff like sturgeon's law and poe's law how come there hasn't been one of these things made around again the novelty of doing that because it pops up so much even we lesbians aren't immune to drawing peepees on things in video games yeah because they know because you know that it pisses uh, a lot of these uptight people off and I and I, and I and I get it, and I get trust me, I agree, I get it. It's uh, uh, cool. Thanks, Digent. I personally prefer drawing boobs over penises. Oh, um. Oh, we draw boobs form. too. Anyway. Well, 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 <laughs> well, no, no, I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm not, I'm not saying you don't. Back to the core. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying you don't. Well, we were talking about how if you give players creativity webs, they will create penises and boobs. That's, they, they, they were drawing penises with the Psyloop in Sonic Frontiers. Um, they were making penises Somebody's with the Smash stage editor. In, yeah. Somebody's literally made a golem in Tears of the Kingdom that shoots fire out of its penis. Yeah, so that, that's the basic gist of it. If you, if you give players creativity, it, it's, it's gonna happen. It, it's, it's, pretty oh much, it's, it's pretty much an undeniable fact. Has somebody made a plane with boobs that shoot torpedoes out? I mean, it, it could happen. It can. I, I, I can tell you that uh, theoretically, I haven't tried it myself, but theoretically, it should be possible to do that in Tears of the Kingdom. Wait, you have white phosphorus grenades in this game? Yes, you do. Damn. Are you surprised about that? Well, as we noticed in um, in the home front run, that thing is not exactly you know light in, in giving a punch. The one you've got there is probably the exact same thing. Well, fresh out of World War II, might as well put them to use. When it reacts with oxygen. It's very violent, and if you catch fire with that, you cannot extinguish it. Oh boy, a chemical fire! Both that game and, if I recall correctly, also Spec Ops: The Line do showcase a realistic depiction of what happens to people being, you know, hit with uh, with high phosphorus, and yeah, it's not very pretty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay then. No. In fact, considering we're in the jungle, uh, and we're talking about like uh, this would be uh, again it, uh, th like this uh, this this service is a great like, for uh, for that type of joke we see in Beavis and Butter Do America. Welcome to the world to the biggest jungle of petrified wood. You can, you may wonder how does wood get so hard? Well, wood got hard over five hundred years ago. And yes, Beavis and Butter are laughing their asses off as the guy in the uh, intercommunicator is explaining about uh, petrified wood and shit, so... <laughs> Alright, let's see... Alright, geared and ready to go? Uh, remember, Apparently the cow we're having is still working just fine. Well, remember too, that's because, that's, that's because, remember too, that's because of the easy gun. Well, well, I was talking about, the, was talking again, about the, the, percent, the percentage of camouflage because you oh, right, right. still throw it in the app. Sure. Now is a prototype model of the Mark 22, a suppressor equipped pistol currently it's in called development. It's the Mark 23. The it's been modified to act as a tranquilizer gun. The Mark 22 is a heavily modified special ops version of the M39 pistol used as a sidearm by the SEALs. Probably the biggest change from the M39 is that it's got a longer barrel, which allows it to be equipped with a suppressor. You know, if it was Yuri from Doki Doki uh, playing this game, uh, she would be taking notes of all of the stuff that Sikin says. Yes, she would. No, 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 that gun isn't big enough. I need, I need, I need, I need a Model 50 to shoot Mother Cooper. Dave, this head. story is not set in the 90s. Oh, for a moment there I thought you were going to say... For a moment there I thought you were going to say that we need a wall for PPK. <laughs> Oh, going for one of the classics, are we? Well, the Warfare PPK is Bond's traditional gun that he uses. If I recall correctly, that was the gun Megatron turned into in Gen 1 as well. And then, and then Natsuki... And then there's Natsuki, she's so weak that a tranquilizer can kill her. And then there's Sayori... Um... Uh... Uh, just she get wants, a rope gun. Can you imagine? Style. Can you imagine uh, uh, Sayori trying to follow the follow the cutscenes of Metal Gear and trying to memorize every yeah. all the political uh, uh, intricacies of everything? <laughs> Sayori's head would explode. Anyway, let's save and see what the uh, paramedic has in terms of us for movie trivia today. Snake. 
Have you ever seen On the Beach? Actually, no, that one. No, no I haven't seen that one actually. Uh, no. About the survivors of the Third World War. Well, that's a the classic set. The entire northern hemisphere is obliterated in a nuclear holocaust, and it's only a matter of time before the few survivors left in the southern hemisphere are poisoned by the deadly fallout. Their only hope is an American nuclear submarine that escapes to the southern hemisphere. They set out for the Arctic to investigate the fallout. The movie came out in 59, and the year that the war was supposed to happen was 1964. In other words... Oh, year, but Doctor Who's only just started! Uh, Sorry, we have just a movie. <laughs> no, that's... Okay, Pedro, Again! Is, uh, we have got to... Pedro, we have got to stop the nuclear apocalypse, otherwise the Cybermen won't even have a chance to make their debut! <laughs> Again, yeah. it's so interesting to see how imaginative the early decades of cinema were, were the, with their settings. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody. Tune in next time where um, Dwebs is. We're gonna get probably Dwebs is gonna be what's going to be Dwebs's favorite um, movie trailer from Paramatic at the end. So tune yeah. in for that. Then see ya.